The water movements in Puget Sound are driven mostly by the tides. Ocean tides are created by the gravitational effects of the sun and the moon on the Earth. In the Puget Sound model, the rise and fall of the tides is too small to be visible. But the currents created by the tides are very visible in the model and are the main reason for using it. We inject tracer dye into the model to observe how the water moves. As the tide rises, the flood current brings water into the sound from the ocean. As the tide falls, the ebb current drains water back to the ocean. In Puget Sound, there are generally two high and two low tides per day, and so two flood and ebb currents. A tidal day is actually longer than a solar day, about 24 hours and 50 minutes. But there is more to water circulation in Puget Sound. The rivers that feed the sound and make it an estuary create a unique pattern of water movement. We can see this by observing freshwater dye at the surface of the main basin. The main basin is relatively wide, deep, and straight, and the tidal currents can flow fairly freely. River water floats on top of the salt water in the sound and forms a fresher layer at the surface. This layer floods and ebbs with the tides, but it also flows gradually out to sea. Now watch how saltwater dye injected below the surface moves. You can see the flood and ebb, but over time, this subsurface salty layer moves opposite to the surface, that is, away from the ocean. This is what we call the net estuarine circulation. Over many tidal cycles, surface fresher water flows out to the ocean, and deep saltier water enters from the ocean. This process keeps Puget Sound healthy by bringing in clean ocean water and flushing pollutants out to sea through Admiralty Inlet. Notice how shallow and rough the bottom of the sound is in Admiralty Inlet. This shallow area is called a sill. It is a remnant of the glacial processes that created Puget Sound. As tidal currents enter Admiralty Inlet from the deep, wide stretches of Juan de Fuca Strait and the main basin, water is squeezed through the narrow, shallow, and rougher passage. The currents speed up, and there is considerable turbulence. We can see an even more dramatic example of a sill at the Tacoma Narrows. All the water exchanged between the main basin and the southern sound passes through here. It is even narrower and shallower and the currents are faster than at Admiralty Inlet. The Whidbey Basin dramatically shows the estuarine circulation. Its three rivers supply two-thirds of all the fresh water that enters the sound, including half of all the fresh water entering the sound coming from the Skagit River alone. Tides in Whidbey Basin are relatively weak because they lose energy as they turn 180 degrees where it connects to the main basin through Possession Sound. Surface water from rivers, such as the Skagit, floods and ebbs, but gradually flows seaward as we saw in the main basin. Notice that the deeper layer moves more slowly, but gradually works its way landward. The current moves very fast through Deception Pass at the northern end of the Whidbey Basin, up to eight knots, but compared to the rest of the sound, only a small volume of water is exchanged. Hood Canal, in contrast, has minimal water movement because it is more constricted. It is long, narrow, deep, and fairly straight, with a shallow dogleg at its southern end. The canal is fed by numerous medium-sized rivers coming off the Olympic Mountains. Water movement is faster near the mouth of the canal because of the cumulative river flow and the proximity to the ocean. There is also another sill where Hood Canal joins the rest of Puget Sound at Admiralty Inlet. Water movement is weaker in the deep layer, the dye patch to the right. The amount of oxygen in the deep layer can become very low in Hood Canal as a result of these natural processes. Sometimes it actually kills fish and other animals. There's considerable research on this condition which may be worsened by human activities. circulation in the southern sound is very complex. The Nisqually Reach, a broad channel off the Nisqually River, connects the Narrows to the rest of the southern sound. 
Currents move fairly smoothly here. In some places, such as Case and Car Inlets, water movements are very weak, much as they are in Hood Canal. But there are also narrow channels, such as Dana and Pickering Passages, where currents are nearly as strong as those in the Narrows. Overall, pollutants in the three satellite basins of Puget Sound, the Southern Sound, Hood Canal, and Whidbey Basin, are slower to be flushed out of the sound because they have to be emptied into the main basin first before being carried out to sea.